I really want to move on to where IT starts to get a bit dangerous. There was a really interesting story last week. Have you ever seen the Brian Krebs DDoS story? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Um, I have to say, I looked at that story, I thought, that's nothing. 660 gigabits per second. What I've seen already out there in terms of IoT potential to do DDoS, that's nothing. Um, and this is where Andrew comes in. Yeah, so um, this was quite a long time ago, back at the start of this year. We, uh, I was a bit bored, I went on Amazon and I thought I'd order the cheapest DVR I could find. This was probably about 30 quid, no hard drive in it, um, but it had very good reviews, a lot of people were using it, probably about 70 reviews when I ordered it. Um, but what it turns out is the security of this device cannot be any worse. It really is as bad as it gets. The first thing I noticed was, when I got it, very distinctive HTTP headers. It had a, a user, a, a, a server string that was completely unique to it. We could find 44,000 of these open or shown up. So that means 44,000 people have port forwarded to this device so you can access the web interface. So they're quite vulnerable already. Um, so you can see most of them are in Turkey, India, kind of distributed towards the Middle East, but they're spread all over the world. Nice geographic distribution. Um, but what we found was this thing was just full of security holes. The, uh, the best one was that the way it authenticated is it checked your password when you logged in, it posted it to a web form, as you'd expect. But after that, it set a cookie, um, or two cookies, DVR password and DVR user. Um, it turned out, as long as those cookies were set to any value, you could log into the device. So it didn't have to be your password, it didn't have to be your username. To top it off, it was your username and password if you had to type it in, so it was leaked through the cookies as well. Um, these are on the internet, so we could already log into the device, that, that's quite bad. But logging into it, all you could do is use it like a normal user. But it gets a lot worse. We popped it open, connected up a serial cable to it to, to get access to the shell on it, which was of course open. Um, got the main binary off it, it's a custom web server, and we found this reference to shell. Um, with a query answer, we thought, this is quite interesting. <laughs> so, uh, rather than doing any hard work on this, I put PS after it, and there we go. We've got all the processes running on the DVR there. You might notice that the user, and the only user there, is root. I don't think we've ever seen a cheap IoT device that doesn't run all of root. So we thought, yeah, could it get any worse than this? Um, and, yeah, the answer is yes, it could get worse than this. So, yeah. No, so, <laughs> so it got a lot worse than this. Um, <laughs> the version of the firmware I had was periodically sending stills from the first channel of the DVR through to a, an address, Laura's here at Yed on there, with who are you, attaching a snapshot and sending it to this guy. Now, it wasn't in all of the firmwares. He claimed it was a development firmware. I'm kind of willing to believe it was a bit of a mistake that was left in there. Um, just as a joke, I thought I'd send Button Moon intro frame by frame to him. It was probably about three gigs worth of traffic sent in the end. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is the kind of invasion of privacy you can get from a, a DVR. So the, the DVR is quite interesting. Um, but we 